Hello everyone, Dr. Abraham. Uh, welcome to our Surgical Manage of Bladder CPA. So this is of uh, the management of bladder. Previously, we discussed the theoretical management of uh, bladder culture. Okay. okay, so for our... So we're... Today, we're going to discuss uh, from radical cystectomy. We'll discuss ileal conduit and cutaneous uh, continent urinary diversion, and lastly, the, or, the types of orthotopic uh, bladder diversion man management. So, we'll start. So, for radical cystectomy, usually, uh, if your patient is diagnosed as uh, T2 to 3 or stage 2 to 4. Uh, one, the gold standard is the radical cystectomy with radical uh, lymph node uh, dissection. So first, so or for our preparation, usually a careful marking. Before you start, careful marking of the ostomy site to avoid interference in a standing and seated position. It is performed to maximize uh, appliance fit and to maximize, to minimize stromal irritation. Usually you do this on the right side of the patient. So what's other preparation, bowel preparation? Uh, it has same rates of anastomotic leak if you do bowel prep, but it's insignificant at, at 9.4 to 9.7%. So you actually, uh, according to Campbell uh, 12, it is advised to do routine bowel preparation for for patient under cystectomy for the reason of ill use. So they found out that if you do a thorough, uh, in, they did a study in 40 patients. So they found out that a three bowel, a three day bowel preparation would prolong the ill use of 10% versus 5% if uh, bowel preparation is not used. So according to Campbell, it is not advised to use a long uh, bowel preparation three days. So usually one day is enough. Antibiotics. So generally, uh, broad spectrum cephalosporine such as cefoxetine will provide adequate coverage. And also, uh, in the absence of significant bleeding, high-risk patients should undergo both cycle and thromboembolic prophylaxis or pneumatic compression. Uh, and pharmacologic prophylaxis before the induction of general anesthesia. So it's uh, extended prophylaxis in the post-operative uh, period is also suggested. So in the position for uh, radical cystectomy, so uh, the position is flexion to 15 degrees uh, is actually adequate to less than necessary. Uh, if there's a history of, except for if there's a, a history of spinal fusion or lumbar injury, and in this position, uh, your bowel pre for preparation, usually the vagina and the perineum in women, 10% uh, uh, povidone iodine is recommended. So it is not also not advised to use uh, chlorhexidine gluconate to avoid uh, injury to the genital skin. So for this position, usually a lower midline incision is made sharply, extending distally from the level of the pubis impesis to the umbilicus superiorly. An infra-umbilical incision provides adequate exposure but can be extended cephalad as needed. So ensuring incision of the abdominal fat in the midline aids in facial closure and prevention of inadequate release of the rectus abdominis from its tendinous insertion at the least. So upward retraction of the umbilicus aids in the identification of the linea alba. So the fascia should be divided uh, and the space of retrus is entered. So this uh, picture shows the mobilization of the umbilicus. So a blunt dissection is performed. Uh, to release the bladder from the pelvic side wall attachments bilaterally. This is carried in a cephalad direction to the level of the vas deferens in men and the round ligament in women. This is a peritoneotomy. It's made lateral to either medial umbilical ligament and uracus and should be controlled in the So this uh, represents... 
sa representation of the root of the small bowel. So a blunt basic. So uh, the attenuation is then turned to the bowel mobilization to, to achieve adequate exposure of the great vessels in the ureters. So on the right side, the white line of toad is incised and carried out around the cecum where the posterior peritoneum is inside to allow mobilization of the root of the small bowel mesentery. On the left side, the white line of toad is likewise inside and a window is created between the sigmoid colon mesentery to communicate sided posterior perineotomy. This space will later be used to transpose the left ureter to the right quadrant for urinary diversion. So, uh, it's a reminder, care should be used to ensure that adequate ureter teratidia is maintained. The obliterated umbilical will be ligated and divided before completing the ureteral dissection. This aid in maximizing ureteral length, the ureter is then controlled with either suture ties or suture uh, ligature and, and divided. So although it is controversial, the distal ureteral margin can be sent for frozen section to evaluate the presence of uh, urothelial carcinoma. Although studies have shown that a correlation between findings of uh, carcinoma in the ureteral margin and subsequent upper tract recurrence. So next, so pandemopathy, I said this last week, the atomic boundaries of a standard template dissection consists of, consists of the genitofemoral nerves laterally, the internal iliac medially, Cooper's ligament inferiorly, and the point at which the ureter crosses the common iliac artery superiorly. In cases of advanced disease, an extended dissection inclusive of the entire common iliac lymph node packet and the presacral lymph node packet can be obtained. So further extension, uh, several to include the pre-aortic packet to the level of the interior mesentery, mesenteric artery show none have demonstrated any additional staging information beyond the dissection of the common iliac artery. So just to know, uh, for uh, dissected uh, nodes more than more, uh, five-year survival improved for, from 44 to 66%. So next, uh, complete pedic lymph and aids usually in the exposure and identification of the vascular pedicle. So to control this, including the superior, middle, and inferior vesicle, uh, are achieved with the aid of a vascular stator. But in our case, usually we tie this using a silk 2 non-absorbable uh, suture. <clears throat> so to divide the rectal identified, and the peritoneum is inside where it overlaps the seminal vesicle. There is a large tumor at the base of the bladder and care must be observed to ensure adequate margin of resection at this point. The rectum is dissected, as you can see, uh, with either blunt or sharp dissection in the midline and it's carried down to the prostate at which the denon villers fascia is encountered. After the release of the rectum in the midline, it is dissected and carried laterally to vesicle pedicles. Uh, similarly, uh, the anterior pedicles, they can be controlled with surgical clips or vascular staplers or any sealing instrument, or you can tie it. So next in this picture of the dorsal venous complex, same as a, a radical prostatectomy. So after completion of the posterior dissection of the of the, after completion of the posterior dissection, the urethra should be palpable. And at this point, attention can be turned to the anterior dissection in a fashion similar to radical prostatectomy. So the end of pelvic fascia overlies the levator muscles and incides sharply, allowing the identification of the confluent the urethra and the dorsal venous uh, vein complex. So this can be ligated uh, with the division of the, dors of the dorsal venous complex and allows the visualization of the anterior urethra. Once visualized and ligated, you can incise and look for the anterior urethra. So if continent ill and urinary diversion is planned, adequate urethral length maintained in a frozen section analysis of margin should be performed. Sparing is the preferred choice in advanced disease in patients with 
pre-existing erectile dysfunction. So I mentioned this last Wednesday that uh, pre-operative uh, history regarding erectile function should be uh, asked for the patient. So we move on for the females. Should be, uh, for the female excentration, inclusive of, of the bladder, urethra, anterior vagina, and the uter uterus and cervix is done. Usually for more advanced disease, for this reason, excentration actually is still the gold standard for therapy. <clears throat> so here, an anterior pelvic excentration begins with the identification of the posterior fornix, as you can see here. And the vaginal cuff is incised uh, in this position here. After gaining into the vaginal canal, the surgeon can control the lateral posterior vascular pedicles to the bladder. Miatus is then incised, either anti-grade from the pelvis or externally from the vagina. And then eventually the specimen is removed. So care should be taken to ensure that the sufficient vaginal mucosa is maintained above the urethral meatus to allow closure of the vaginal defect. So here in this picture, the absence of the bladder neck involvement and the absence of a low stage uh, below T2, so orthotopic neobladder can be considered. So it is uh, prudent to do a watertight closure to avoid period uh, interrupting the vagina. And also an interruptive closure is uh, preferred for this patient. So for, sorry. For partial cystectomy, uh, for those with solitary lesion of small size who can, who lack on current carcinoma in situ, of course, carcinoma in situ uh, uh, cystectomy, uh, in patients selected who are candidates for partial, a preoperative uh, preparation includes counseling of the patient for a possible radical prostatectomy. So preoperatively, if you're planning um, partial, you should also discuss a uh, possible uh, radical cystectomy. And also the unary diversion, uh, you should also discuss. A simcom preferential incision around the umbilic and extended towards the pubis. So a complete excision includes the umbilicus, the uricus, and the dome of the bladder wall for a visual margin free of tumor. So for far partial cystectomy, I want a confirmation of resection with adequacy with frozen section analysis. Uh, it is necessary for the urethral orifice or intramural ureter can be incised and reimplantation re may be performed. After the excision of the tumor, uh, you can close it uh, by either a polyglactin two or three uh, layers uh, and installation of fluid and Foley catheter for a watertight closure. And then eventually after uh, uh, seven uh, cystogram seven so next, we're on the second part of my lecture. So this is the, after you remove the bladder, what do you do next? So next, we usually do is an ileal conduit. So why? Because it is, a, it is the simplest type of conduit diversion to perform, and it is associated with the fewest intraoperative and immediate postoperative complication. So it is not advisable to use the ileum in patients with the short bowel syndrome and inflammatory small bowel disease, and also those who had uh, extent. So you may opt for other options aside, using, aside of using the LU. So what do you do usually? Up to 15 seg, uh, cm in length is selected from the ileal valve. The cecum and ileal appendage, that portion of the ileum is fixed to the, you, to the retroperitome, usually mobilized. The ileal mesentery is transilluminated and, major, and a major arcade to the segment uh, selected is identified with the clamp or mosquito clamp. The mesentery immediately beneath the bowel is penetrated and the bowel is encircled with a vessel loop. The mesentery 2 cm in length is cleared away from the bowel beneath the mesentery. After you selected your ileal conduit, you do an ileoileostomy for the remaining bowels or remaining. So this picture, uh, the isolated segment is then flush uh, with copious amount of saline until the irrigant is clear, at which the point the ureters are brought out to the peritoneum in a 
right lower quadrant to accomplish this the u left ureter must be brought over the great vessels posterior to the sigmoid mesentery to rent in the posterior peritoneum so it's always remember the left ureter should go to the right side so a convenient method in introducing strength through the to the o illustrated here in this picture the base of the conduit is fixed to the retroperitoneum to the right uh, lower quadrant by suturing the posterior peritoneum to the conduit. So actually what you do here is uh, you retroperitonealize the ureterointestinal anastomosis. And then eventually you pull out to create a stoma at the right side beside the umbilicus. So here are the early and late complications of the iliac conduit. So early, the highest still, although almost non-significant, it's still wound infection. However, for late, it's always sepsis. The reason for uh, for admissions for patient more than po more than 30, 30 days uh, post op. So next, so aside from an ileal can do it will proceed with the transverse colon. So aside from the ileum, you have other options such as the transverse uh, colon and the sigmoid. Uh, in general, you take a 15 cm, sufficient that is not uh, sufficient to, for your conduit. So it is important not to isolate the segment that's too short and therefore incapable of reaching the retrograde position that attention to ureterocolic anastomosis may be performed and retroperitonealized. So this segment uh, is isolated between the bowel slams and two-layer uh, colocolostomy for stapled anastomosis. If a colopayelostomy is performed, the segment should be placed in a sepalad uh, to the bowel anastomosis. The isolated segment is then irrigated again uh, with copious amounts of saline until the effluent is clear and the proximal end is close with the running Cornell suture uh, using 3O chromic and the second layer of Lambert sutures 3O. So this is a, uh, what I'm saying is a two-layer bowel uh, closure or anastomosis with the bowel and your uh, ureterointestinal anastomosis. So here in this picture, we were done with uh, the ileum trans transfers and the uh, here we'll discuss with the sigmoid colon. So it's almost the same, uh, 15 cm in length. It is also mobilized, although it's more mobile. The, it's uh, more mobile and more close to the your conduit. Uh, the attachment and the line of thought along the descending colon. The segment is isolated on the on the sigmoid vessels, and it it is placed lateral on the sigmoid colon. In this picture at letters. As you can see also a stoma is, has been made here. So those are your options. So for third part of uh, the next, this is the next chapter in Campbell, 12th edition. Those uh, with cutaneous, cutaneous, uh, cutaneous continent urinary diversion. First is a right colon pouch. So a right colon pouch usually so uh, let me explain what a cutaneous continental urinary diversion. So these are the diversions that you can just, uh, like a stoma, you can pull out uh, out of the skin and put a catheter. That what, that's why it's still continent. So the right colon, for right colon pouch, usually you do a right colon 10 cm of the terminal ileum, as you can see in letter A. So you mobilize this uh, along the, with the white line of toad and along the base of the mesentery. Uh, usually with GA sticks, you can use that. And then usually you anastomose, whatever you took out. Using cautery, a small opening here in letter B is created on the anti-mesenteric border of the cecum to fit the absorbable stapler. Then distal opening the colon is then aligned with the cecostomy by forming the right, right colon, as you can see here in uh, letter C and B. So the limbs of the absorbable GIA stapler are then inserted to the distal opening into the cecostomy and then the stapler is fired an anti-mesenteric border opposed to the folded bowel. So you usually avert the continuous uh, subsequent stapler application. So in letter E, as you can see, 
the pouch, the generic right pouch, uh, has has been averted. Several options also for ureteral anastomosis. So you do your anastomosis with your ureters and the sphincter mechanism. Um, maneuvers may be approached through a co coalescent distal colon, opening a uh, sicoi. So this is for your continent continuous. So another option is a staple uh, sigmoid reservoir. So same as the dissect earlier, so part of the sigmoid in the descending column is measured approximately is 35 centimeters. Uh, it, uh, you mobilize this by incising the peritoneum along the also the white line of tone. Once mesenteric, the mesenteric window has been created. The segment of the colon is isolated using the metal gear staplers. So relation of the bowel continuity is achieved to the gear and end-to-end -end anastomosis since this is the sigmoid colon and closer to your rectum, so it's, it's easily stapled. So here, uh, each uh, metal's uh, stapled ends of the isolated colon is excised and the bowel lumen is irrigated. The isolated sigmoid is folded on its uh, on a U configuration, aligning both ends. Then into the open bowels, it is fired. The stapler is fired along the mesenteric uh, line of the folded bowel. Again, two to, two to three applications of the bowel uh, reinversion ureteral implants, the tenia here, should be carried out. Using the residual colon opening to facilitate the scent passage, uh, these stents and the superpubic tube are led to the a separate stab wound in the pouch, which is uh, brought uh, to the lower abdomen in a stab wall incision in a continence mechanism. So usually this uh, pouch for cutaneous uh, continent uh, diversion, you can also use this for other topic bladder. So using the same procedure as I discussed here, you can use this for an orthotopic uh, uh, bladder diversion also. So same procedure, it's just that you put this to the pelvic gutter. Next, position, next uh, type of uh, continent cutaneous is the ileal reservoir or cup pouch. So this is a 20, 15 to 20 cm in length of the ileum, again, is selected for creating the into susceptible nipple valve. So please bear with me, so this is a long procedure. The proximal 10 cm serves as the valve. And the distal 5 to 10 cm serves as the, as the patch. So the distal length is chosen based on the volume loss after resection of the field of the mechanism. Only 5 cm is necessary for the patch. So in this instance, the middle eight, 6 to 8 cm of the 10 cm segment is denuated of the mesentery by cautery. An alice or bobcap clamp is advanced into the, the ileal terminus, grasping the full thickness of the intussusceptum, as you see in this uh, uh, picture, inverting the ileum into the pouch. So this time, you do an intussusception and then reverse the bowel is uh, inverted. So a small button hole is made back to the wall of the ileal plate to allow the angle of the stapler to be passed through and advance here. A fourth stapler is applied. Uh, so this figure usually shows the two valve mechanism. So you do your, the, you attach your ureteral ileal anastomosis to this intussusception. So this will serve as your valve. So, and then a 2 to 3 cm strip of absorbable mesh is placed to the additional windows of the diver at the base of each nipple valve. So, the mesh are fashioned into collars and sewed into the base of the pouch as well as the terminal ilu. So, actually, from what I understand, uh, I'm look, trying to look for a video. So, you just do a valve mechanism for your two ureters or your two ureter anastomosis. It is quite complex and... I haven't seen a complete video of uh, this uh, continent uh, ileal reservoir. The good thing about this, since uh, you can use this as cutaneously, you can also convert this for, again, for an orthotopic approach. So we already have discussed two orthotopic approach, but uh, later we'll expand more to other types of orthotopic uh, neoblast. 
So next is an Indiana pouch. So this one is uh, just a 2cm wide strip of absorbable, uh, oh, sorry, a segment of the terminal ilium here. So it is 10 cm, the entire length along uh, with the entire length of right colon is, uh, is isolated. So in this part, our appendectomy is performed and the appendicial fat pad obscuring the inferior margin of the ileocecal junction here is removed by cautery. And the entire right colon as shown here, and are closed with running absorbable sutures. So the ostium of the T is secured to the walls of the ilium with interrupted absorbable sutures. And the wall of the ilium is closed over the T mechanism with a running absorbable suture. And then the ureters is anastomose at the top of the T. Okay, mm -hmm. So this T, Again, can also tatlo na yung discuss natin using orthotopic. So this T pouch can also be used for orthotopic. It is, so tanda yung continuous and orthotopic. So pwede din siya. So same. So now we approach with the orthotopic bladder substitution. So I already discussed four. So overlap yon. So next is the Kami two. So here in the Kami two, this is for orthotopic. So orthotopic mean basically just you. Your near bladder, you just put it at the pelvis. So orthotopic means uh, you just put uh, your near bladder where it's supposed to be. So in this case, the pelvis or your anterior abdomen. So here in Kami 2, uh, this is quite uh, long. So this is 65 cm of the ilium. 65 of cm of the ilium should be isolated with an area of uh, ilium identified to reach the region of the urethra in a tension-free manner, so it's 65 cm. The integrity of the bowel is restored or, or anastomose. The mesenteric trap is closed and isolated the portion of the ilium. It is open along the anti-mesenteric border of the length, except for the area previously identified for urethral anastomosis. So those, that's the last part of your 65 cm. The ilium is uh, then placed transverse U orientation, as you can see in this picture. The medial borders of the U are sutured together like this at letter B. A fingertip opening is made at the preselected area for ure uh, urethral anastomosis. And then the entire ileal plate is brought down by the pelvis. And the urethral anastomosis is performed. So here, this suture. So this is your, here in my arrow, this is the caudal por portion. And this is the cephalic portion. So you, with your U, you just put a hole and then attach it to your urethra. So next, uh, this is an orthotopic hemicoc ilva. So just a background, you can also use this for your cutaneous urinary diversion aside from, but it's, it is mostly used for orthotopic uh, cock ilia lesser part. So you, how to construct this? So, kanina 65, ito naman, 61 cm. So the 22 cm segment are placed in a U, here in A and B. And then the 17 cm segment of the ilion will be used to make the afferent into susception. So uh, as you can see in here, letter C, it is reversed. The posterior wall of the reservoir is then uh, formed joining the medical portion of the U with the cutaneous running suture. A 5 to, C, a five to 7 cm anti-reflux valve is made removing the mesentery underneath the segment. Then the, an intersecting of the afferent liquid with the use of a or set clamp to use. So as you can see, most of the time, the intersusceptum is used for, for valve mechanism. So here in letter D, the afferent is fixed with two staples within the valves. 
who almost uh, 100% into the septus. So the valve is then fixed back to the wall outside the reservoir with additional surgical staples. After the completion of the nipple valve, the reservoir is completed by folding the ilium on itself and closing it, leaving the most dependent end of the suture uh, here in line for uh, open urethral anastomosis. So in some readings, not Campbell, they ano to, ang tawag nila chimney. <clears throat> so next is a serous lined uh, extramural tunnel. So this W shape is a 40 cm ileal segment isolated from the distal ilium. So same, same location. The antimesicteric border is isolated and it is all open. Then the edges of the medial flaps are joined with the running absorb on using running absorbable sutures. On either side, the serosal surface is then, uh, of the two flaps, are joined by a seromuscular continuous suture of silk 3 o And then this forms a two serous line intestinal troughs. Each ureter is laid down in its corresponding trough. So here, in letter D and letter E. So the mucosal edges on each side is approximated here. And reimplanted to the ureter. So the anterior wall of the pouch is then closed in a side-to-side -side fashion. Then the suture line of the most of the dependent portion of the pouch. Okay. So next is uh, Ilya Nibla. Luckily, I have experienced this together with Dr. Bardelot and Dr. Fair. So this is a this is a hot man ileal bladder. So this is uh, quite difficult and quite long. We're using 70, so this is the highest, 70 cm portion of the terminal ileum. It is selected and isolated. So it is inside also, again, always inside in the antisynthetic border, in the essence that you don't want to devascularize your ileum. So you just leave a 5% uh, C five cm. No, I'm sorry for not five percent. Five cm on on each end. So the ilium is arranged in a the it is arranged in a w w configuration again. And then after a buttonhole of the ilium is made and removed on the antimesenteric dependent portion of the the ilium, the ureteral anastomosis ureteral anastomosis is performed as you can see here in letter C. Then end to end side. Uh, and, and to side, uh, directly to the ends of the two segments are stented. So the reservoir is then uh, closed in a side-to-side -side manner. So it's not illustrated here, but you also create a chimney for this patient for the attachment of the uh, ureter. But in this case, he attached the ureter at the side of the pouch. Next is a studer pouch. This is also one of the more commonly done orthotopic uh, neobladder. So a designated segment of the terminal ilium for uh, constitution of the, of the studer pouch. So the mesenteric division is made in the ilio, colic, and terminal branches of the superior mesenteric artery, which should extend to the avascular plane of the mesentery. So we should look for that. So the 22 cm... Uh, the reservoir and a 10 cm here to a 12 cm length for the apparent leave. So the proximal, the 5 cm segment of the small bowel is discarded to allow mobility to the pouch and the small bowel anastomosis. So avoid, avoid deep incision to the mesentery at that location. So which uh, the 44 cm length is opened along the medial mesentery. That the two twenty two cm segments are joined in a U shape and then close in opposite direction, sewing each suture with run, running three O uh, polyglycolic acid sutures. The reservoir is then fold in half opposite direction. Uh, it was opened here, completely open for now, but the medial parts are sutured. So next. The remaining uh, segment of the afferent leaf is separated from the reservoir segment here uh, at the uh, afferent limb. So the dotted, the dotted line aspect here depicts the incision of the 4CM segment to the tubularize to the portion of the reservoir. 
the incision is diverted laterally near the two ends from the flap of the afferent limb tunnel. The two ends of the reservoir are eventually closed and the, the mesenteric windows of the vasculation to the reserosa and a piece of should a uh, penrose drain is placed. So, uh, the serosa of the two limbs of the reservoir is then brought to the with uh, silk uh, sutures. So here. Finally, actually parang tea pouch din siya from, if you remember the tea pouch from the continent, it's almost the same as in almost exactly the same. The difference is this one is a pouch. It's just placed spontaneously. So going back, as you can see here, that you notice my arrows. It is placed and the flaps of the reservoir are closed to the distal fix, distal fix afferent limb. The opening is much short to the reservoir. So for either studer, uh, the reservoir is then folded in half here. So same close with uh, 3O polyuture. So next, uh, uh, it's each ureter is then spatulated, as you can see here. And then endoperoileal anastomosis is performed during, using 4O and then a stent is placed. Here. Medyo mas, uh, it's almost the same as your tea pouch, but very complex. So our second to the last, this is uh, almost the same as the mains two. This is mains three. So you, what you do is you, a short segment, a 10 to 15 cm segment of the cecum with a 20 to 30 cm uh, segment of the ilium is isolated. Then the bowel segment is opened along the peric border here in C and D. So appendectomy should be done for this, uh, for mains two, same as mains, uh, for mains three, same as mains two. So the posterior reservoir is then close joining the opposite three limbs together via continuous suture and then an anti-reflux uh, implantation of the ureters through a subumocausal tunnel. So this time they're not using um, intussusception. They're tunneling the ureter in the submucosa. So same, you use uh, you, you use uh, a side-to-side -side, uh, closure and also a cystostomy as advice. If you can see here, so this is the cystostomy and these are the stent. I've noticed, but I haven't uh, fully grasped this. Here in this illustration, the stent is, is placed cutaneously along with the cystostomy tube. Lastly, the Padua pouch or the Vesica iliae padona, pato, padovana. So this one, a 42 cm segment of the distal ilium is isolated and open along its entire length. So an opening is made in the most dependent part of the segment of the urethral anastomosis, about 12 to 14 cm from the distal end segment. So this is yung, ito yung B, so this one. The segment of the posterior valves are okay. sewn to the funnel bladder neck. The ilium is formed into a, spi a spiral shape and the back wall is sutured with running absorbable sutures. So here, ito pa rin yan. Completing the posterior edge, the ureters are spatulated and pass through the posterior aspect of the neobladder and anastomose accordingly with 4O monocryl interrupted suture. So, medyo basic yung pagka anastomos nila. This is uh, uh, walang valve mechanism or non-continent for the ureters. The anterior aspect of the near bladder is folded together and sewn with a zero zeros running suture. And the ureteral strength are, are exteriorized. Actually, you notice ko with the, my reading, the orthotopic ones, you can put your stent cutaneously, rather with your orthotopic. But in my experience, the stents are placed inside the neobladder. So actually, that's actually my last slide. So 
this is very, very, very difficult to understand if you haven't seen it in video or if you haven't read. The illustrations are just illustrations, but most of the videos and readings are very difficult to understand. It just the essence of all this neo bladders or bladder diversion is just uh, should be tension free. So that's the key for your uh, ureteral, uh, ureteral anastomosis and your neo bladder. So if you have any question, the floor is uh, now open. <laughs> Do you have any questions, sirs? You just turn on your mic and then ask me. Actually, medyo complex then. Only one. Uh, ang na-experience ko pa lang dito is akong do it and uh, one or two. So, the floor is now open for question. I have a question. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, Dr. Makaraga, I have a question. Hi, sir. When will you versus a conduit and a continent pouch? Because you discuss conduit. Technically, if you group it in, uh, actually, tatlo yan eh. You have a okay. conduit, you have an orthotopic bladder, and you have a uh, continent pouch. Yes, sir. O, doon na lang ako. When will you decide if you want only a conduit versus a continent pouch? Doon na lang muna tayo. Huwag na tayo sa sir, orthotopic bladder. Ah. My answer here would be, would vary eh. Uh, aside from aside from Campbell, it's more of surgeon preference. But if you're looking at evidence, there there's no significant difference between any of them. It's more of uh, the quality of life. For example, uh, would your patient want a stoma, and if it's possible to do a stoma or or whichever he choose. But most of the my answer should vary depending on the, on the patient selection. But Campbell actually doesn't have... Uh, for patient selection, sir, it's more of surgeon preference and some factors for the patient. My response is, John, for the benefit of the younger residents. Because a conduit, you have to put a colostomy or urostomy bag. Yes, sir. Because it's continuously lalabas yung ihe. Mapanghe. Versus in a continent pouch, you will have to put in a catheter to drain your continent pouch so you're dry. Number one. Number two, if the patient is young, pwede siya mag-continent. Pero kung medyo matanda na, na. kung do it. Because the, 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 the amount of stress of the surgery of a continent pouch is significantly higher as compared to an ileal kung do it. Yes. Because an ileal kung do it, you will just cut an ileal segment and as to most tapos. Whereas in pouch, it's all it all involves both the large colon and the small intestine. No, that's my that would be my answer rather than a surgeon preference. Eh, kung assuming na lang magaling ako pareho, eh di sabi na presyente dok, ikaw nang bahal ng pamilya. Thank eh, you, kasi sir. Kasi magagawin na ako kaya ako do it na lang. So ako, I would rather answer like that. No, may you, may, may may konting ano why this why that why this why that. Because when on the board exams, they will see what what is your basis for answering. Because your answer is vague. Eh? Uh, depends on the surgeon. Ah, uh, vague. Parang walang laman. Mm. Oh, my, 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 sorry, question number two. Because, also again, for the benefit of the younger residents, you kept on saying 10 cm, 45 cm, all cm, 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 cm. Technically, oh, let's say, let's just go over ileal conduit. You, you cannot resect the terminal ilium. Uh, that's my question one. Why? You, why, cannot, why cannot you use the terminal ilium? Uh, question one. Question two. It's not about also so you, you preserve the terminal ilium and then you have a certain segment. But there's a comment. The important thing is the vascular supply that ilial can do meet. Kasi, kanina kasi when I listen to you, uh, you, you, you get your, term, your ilial segment, pen CM from the ileocecal valve. But what I was waiting for is you have to look for the vascular supply of that ilium because if your vascular supply is compromised, your conduit will fail. So use, that's my comment. Also, a question called why preferably preserve the terminal ilium? So the terminal ilium, sir, usually uh, the vitamin D, sir, B9 is usually absorbed there. So that's why you try to preserve. I know, pardon, vitamin what? Uh, B12, sir. B12? What is B9? What is B9? B12. 
So you should preserve that, sir. And for your second question, I mentioned in the initial conduit, so any any resection or isolation of the ileum, you should look for the vascular eye cage through what I said earlier was trans illumination, just to save your uh, bowel. I, I missed that. Okay. Uh, yeah, you look for the arcade. Oh, yeah. to, oh, thank to you, thank you. I, I mean, it's 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 important because it's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. Ideally, sir, I mean, so, sorry, from I 2CM, from the, uh, 2CM from the vascular, from your incision, from the vascular arcade, arcade sir. So you do trans elimination. So, thank you, sir, for important your. Yung, yung rin niya kanina, yung tension. Dapat walang tension. Kasi pag maiksi naman ng iyong ilial conduit at biglang nag your 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 ilial conduit technically can be longer kasi pag maiksi yon tas biglang nagdistend yung abdomen baka mahila yung conduit papasok. Magi ischemia kasi may tension, mahihila papasok. So if you want to err on the safer side, make your conduit longer kasi pwede mo naman siya maging uh, yung colostomy na nakul para para exteriorize siya. Uh, 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 ma filter Oh, Ayun, no? Donut, naka-donut. Yes, the mas naka-donut. Kasi takot ka rin na pumasok yun eh. Pag nag, kasi post-op, since nag-bowel manipulation ka, mag-i-edema ang bitukan niya, lalakin siya niya. And there's much, much just comments. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that uh, comment. So do you have uh, any other questions from the panel? So if... Uh, oh, na. Oh, may question pa ako isa. <laughs> ang, ano ang pinaka-major problem mo pag gumagamit ka ng continent pouch where you are involved with large colon? I haven't uh, read that, sir. But okay, it's more... technically, basta large colon, ang pinaka-problema mo, babara. Because your colon contains mucus. That's why pag, pag large colon, kailangan talaga large bore ang catheter dyan tsaka nag irrigate ka post-op. As a resident, no residente ako, nakadalawang Indiana at saka isang studor, nag-assist ako. Pero sabi ko, wow, hindi ko gagawin sa private practice to. Ang hirap. Ang problema dyan, post-op, you have to flush it every day. Kasi ang daming, di ba, ang colon, puro plema yan. Paired to the ilium, mas plema ang colon. Dumaan kayo ng GS, iba ang colostomy sa ileostomy. Ang colostomy, mas ma, mas ma plema. Versus ang ileostomy, mas liquid. So, pag gumamit ka ng large colon or ng usually ang, ang continent pouches, usually, continent pouches usually use the colon because malaki ang volume na nagagawa niya as compared to the small intestine. Ayun. So, usually yun ang ano. Ang itatanong usually sa board or sa mga exam, the difference between your uh, electrolyte abnormalities associated while using the stomach, the ileum, and the colon. Iba-iba yan. Apo. May table din yan. In the, well, again, because your lecture is discussing about technique, but for the benefit of the residents, when you study, you have to create a table when you use as You can use also, uh, also the stomach, ha? Apo. The stomach can also be used. Stomach. Uh, actually, that was part of my lecture last Wednesday, sir. Ah, uh, yun. I was absent. <laughs> uh, yun. So, for, your... for studying purposes, you, 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 you tabulate them. Kasi meron yan, eh. Pros and cons. Using small intestine, Large intestine, stomach, pros and cons of continent and incontinent. Pros and cons, if you use an orthotopic bladder, or kasi ang orthotopic para augmentation, cystoplasty and dating nun eh. Ayan, doon yun yung mga comments ko doon. Sige, o baka may iba pa. Masaya na ako madalda. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that. So we have questions in the chat box. So, for Glenny, so Dr. Makale already answered this question about the calipers. Always the vascular arcade, which is the term. So, we just have uh, comments, no questions. So, do you have any uh, question? If not, we'll end this uh, lecture. I know it's very technical, but it's a uh, it's, uh, good read for everybody. So, if not, we'll take uh, one picture for our attendance for our logbook and then. Uh, good. So next week, what's our topic? So next week we'll discuss BPH sure. and BPH, and prostate, and prostate, and prostate, prostate surgeries. Uh, prostate surgeries. So let's turn on our.
Okay, Espina. Very good, very good. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everybody. See you next uh, week. We don't have meeting for next for Monday. Wala yata sa Monday. Sa pa sa Monday dumang sa da. Wala po tayo sa Monday. Pita tanong picture yun. Good evening, sir. Sir, award 9 ba kayo? Sir, uh, award 9 ako ngayon. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> ko makakatok, sir. Nandito lang kami, ah. <laughs> kami, ah. Dadaan ako dyan. Ganda rin yung Glenn Fiddit niya. Sunod ako. Approve. Thank you, po. Thank you, po. Okay. Thank you.